Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee with the GFS Overnight Run. And just to give you a quick summary before we go through it, this was a very, very interesting and dynamic run all the way through. There's a lot going on here. We're going to start off with the current map, and there's going to be a, a Joe Stradamus post on this uh, that gets into it a little more specifically, and I'll pull out certain specific hours so that you can uh, take a look and get an idea of what's happening. First off, up here in the uh, west and in the Arctic regions, it's all the same. This is the same horrible pattern for you winter lovers that we've had for the last two plus months with the vortex as strong as ever across the Arctic. And we have the trough that dives down in the western states. <clears throat> we have the ridging that's here in the east. Now, uh, we are only going to move it into the weekend. And I want you to watch what happens up here in just a few short days. Those vortexes just get ripped apart. Uh, what happens is that they basically begin to split with one that retrogrades back westward towards Siberia, and then another one makes its way into eastern Canada. So now, and we're going into this weekend, we have a pretty decently strong northwest flow that establishes, it establishes itself uh, from northwest Canada down into the eastern states. We have a trough coming through here on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, the flow splits here in the west. Uh, we have an upper low that forms and cuts off in Nevada. The northern part of that jet, we have a ridge that builds up the northwest into Canada. So you can see there's two flows here uh, that run. Here's the northerly jet, and now we have the southern jet right there. Now, we'll get into early next week, and you still have all of this here in the east, rather cold flow and there's your split in the west now the thing that happens out in the pacific that's very important and if you watch carefully i'm just going to back it up here you have the pacific jet right right here like this coming in uh to northern california in the pacific northwest but watch what happens as we move it forward this jet here this system shifts southward so the entire subtropical jet stream winds up sh shifting southward so that weather systems now, instead of crashing into the Pacific Northwest and diving and making a deep trough in the west, are now coming much further south. And these systems are now going to be coming into Southern California instead of coming in up in the north. This ridge is intact and in preventing that from happening. So this is very, very important um, for the longer term in terms of uh, weather systems that are going to start marching across in the southern stream. Now, here in the east, going into early next week, this vortex in Canada and another trough that comes through brings down a pretty decent shot of cold air here for later Sunday, Sunday night into Monday. I suspect that we will have uh, uh, one or two fairly cold days here with temperatures uh, below normal. Now, we move it along, and uh, again, all of this is different here. We have this strong ridge up in the west. You have a polar flow that's established from the Arctic regions uh, into Canada. It's not particularly strong. It's We don't have a very deep vortex here in Canada that's driving it, but we do have a little vortex complex right there. And there's another little vortex that's forming uh, right up here. And that's going to be uh, controlling the flow. And the northern jet is establishing itself fairly well here as we move through next week. Now, the southern stream is beginning to send in weather systems one after another. Now here, there's a trough here. We've got this system now in the southwest. And as we move this along, uh, you can see the, this system comes out of the southwest. So the model is definitely giving a storm signal of some kind as we go into the uh, second weekend of January. And all of this here uh, is now pretty much in control of the cold flow. So how strong this eventually gets uh, is going to be key. Um, also, uh, we're going to have to look, if this is correct, as these weather systems come out of the southwest, how they interact with this northern jet is going to determine what our uh, weather is going to wind up and what kinds of weather systems we're going to be dealing with. And, and moving it along to the end of the period, 
We don't really see too much change here. The Arctic regions are warm. The vortex is completely gone. We're now at the middle of the month. Uh, we have a fairly deep trough that's along the east coast. We have uh, weather systems here, the deep trough out uh, from the Gulf of Alaska on southward. Uh, the ridge is still there in the western states. Looks like there's a couple of disturbances there, but uh, judging from this look, uh, to me, this is going to be hanging around for a while. So we have, we are definitely uh, going into pattern change. Uh, it is going to continue uh, to be in the evolutionary process in terms of how this all plays out. Obviously, the models are going to change a little bit, uh, and also to a large degree, they're going to change. But the overall flavor is that the pattern of uh, mid-October to the end of December has now completely run its course and we are changing into something new that's going to favor colder air here in the eastern states. And I would say probably several opportunities for um, weather systems to come along and produce um, potential snows for uh, the, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, and for the Northeast. So uh, enjoy your day. Um, Read the Joe Stradamus post that's going to be going with this. That'll be coming out at 6 a.m. And we will, uh, of course, be posting the daily local forecast on the website, meteorologistjoechoppy.com.